the Grenfell Tower still casts its shadow over Britain. Today, the government revealed that the external cladding on 600 buildings is now being investigated. The House should, of course, be careful on speculating what caused this fire. But as a precaution, the government has arranged to test cladding in all relevant tower blocks. Mr Speaker, shortly before I came to the chamber, I was informed that a number of these tests have come back as combustible. The relevant local authorities and local fire services have been informed, and as I speak, they are taking all possible steps to ensure buildings are safe and to inform affected residents. Cladding was a key issue at Grenfell. The building's outer skin was an aluminium composite material. That's quite common. You rainproof the building with thin sheets of aluminium bound around a core of some kind. The best cladding has a mineral core, which is completely non-combustible. But, as Newsnight revealed, the core at Grenfell was polyethylene, a plastic, one of the less fireproof core types. That may have let the fire spread. So the government is looking at those 600 buildings to work out how many may have cladding with too combustible a core. A new worrying element emerged today, though. We've described before how a Camden tower block contained a major flat fire back in 2012. Camden believed this was because they had the safer sort of cladding on their towers. But the council revealed today that following tests on their cladding, that they weren't supplied with the cladding that they thought they had bought for some of their buildings. We thought we were dealing with reputable companies and we feel, we feel let down um, and our tenants feel let down. My absolute priority is to make sure that our tenants feel safe, which is why we're putting in place the 24-7 fire wardens and why we're acting quickly to take down those extra panels. Five towers are now having cladding stripped off them. We know that we've got 13 of the, the taller buildings across Camden and these ones in particular, the Chalcots estate, were clad by the same company as um, Wyden who did the work in Kensington and so it was really top of our list to look at all of the workmanship, look at all of the cladding products that we use and really make sure that we're 100% confident that our residents are safe in those buildings. This issue though goes far beyond London council homes. Now, I'm in Maidenhead, in Theresa May's constituency, and the building behind me is her local Premier Inn. If you look, you can see that that building is covered in cladding, specifically an aluminium composite material. If this building were being used as social housing, it would already have had to send a sample of that cladding to the government for testing, to make sure it was one of the safe and not the unsafe forms of aluminium cladding. But because that building is used as a hotel, there is no such obligation. So we checked, and this hotel is one of three Premier Inns which, the company says, does not appear to meet the required fire standards. Premier Inn said that developers were responsible for the construction of the buildings. We were extremely concerned to learn that they had used a cladding that does not appear to comply with recognised government guidance on compliance with the building regulations for use in high-rise buildings and are seeking to address this with the developers. Premier Inn also said that an independent expert has assured them that those three hotels are safe to continue operating given their evacuation plans and robust safety measures. Working out whether things are compliant or not, though, is surprisingly complex because people can commission tests to prove things work in certain scenarios, so-called desktop studies. It is open to wriggle room in that the criteria given for which tests should be used in the desktop study are not laid down, and also it does not say, lim it does not say who is qualified or is not qualified to do such a study. A tougher building rulebook is surely already on the cards. A simpler one might be wise as well. Well, Chris Cook had that report and he's with me now. You've singled out Premier Inn um, just before we come on to Nick. Is, is it fair to do that? Uh, not really at all, to be honest. We had a list of buildings which we believe um, have issues potentially with their cladding. And we went to Premier Inn and they were enormously honest and enormously straightforward and they just replied immediately mm. after they'd gone away and checked. So I think it's actually quite important to stress that, in a sense, it's not Premier Inn we should really be worrying about. Um, furthermore, it's important to also stress that the cladding they did use is a fire retardant cladding. It is not of the sort that automatically meets the building codes, but it's not bad. It's not the stuff that we think was used in Grenfell. Furthermore, they have um, 
multiple escape routes in all the hotels. They have alarms in every room. There is no particular reason to be particularly worried about them. It's just unfortunate, really, for them that we've singled them out because they were so prompt and so open and honest with us when we went to them.